Lads, what's going on? First time I'm uh, smiling from ear to ear today. Because I'm actually very, very excited. I've been excited about all the other videos earlier today that I shot so far. But this one in particular, I'm excited for as well. Maybe a little more excited. Just because it involves one of my favorite series of all time, The Twilight Zone. We're going to get right into it. Like, comment, subscribe. And um, let's continue. So the idea of uh, this video is going to be another episode analysis from my favorite show, The Twilight Zone. <clears throat> this one in particular. Okay, we spoke about Queen of the Nile before. You guys obviously have to watch that. But this one, you definitely need to watch. The name of the episode is called The Howling Man. Such a powerful, powerful episode. Of course, we're going to make some uh, relations and connections um, to see retention, but... Let's go on, let's go on. So stick with me. Of course, as we begin all of these episode TV show analyses, we have to sort of give you guys not a terse synopsis, but just a summary of what went down in the episode. Based on my words, I'm gonna to try to paraphrase it as best I can. So we begin the episode, we see this bewildered, middle-aged, not, eh, he's like in his 40s, man in the camera like please listen to what i have to tell you because what i'm telling you what i'm telling you now is of the utmost importance it is very important it's the difference between life and death boom we fast forward later in the episode and we see um the same man trying to shield himself from heavy rain a heavy torrential downpour and he is shielding himself from all from all sides at least he's trying to he has some light jacket and it's not really doing him well to protect him against the rain. He sees this huge castle. He, come upon, he comes upon this huge spot, this huge area. And then he knocks on the door over and over. No one's answering. He knocks on the door some more. And right when he's about to give up, some man that looks like he, you know, took his fashion tips from Moses himself, Moses from the chapter of Exodus, from, um, you know, from the Bible, Old Testament, equipped with staff in hand. He comes in, he comes out and says, come inside my friend so he beckons inside you know the the main the character from the beginning his name is i think mr Elliman. i forget Elliman. i Elman. we're gonna say for this uh, you know i forget the, the the actual name but if it's mr Elliman, it's mr Elliman. if it's not we're gonna call him mr Elliman anyway so mr Elliman goes in with this guy that looks like moses and he says you know, Mr. Element, oh my goodness, thank you for, you know, shelter, giving me shelter. I'm going to be gone in the morning and you won't even know I'm here. The guy that looked like Moses, by the way, as the guy that looks like Moses, bringing Mr. Element through the castle, you're seeing a lot of these individuals that also look like Moses, like all this hair, you know, very, it's seemingly unkept uh, with a, you know, a strong countenance and a staff all walking around looking at Mr. Element in a very, very weird way. Mr. Elliman says, listen, all I have to do is just be sheltered here for the night and tomorrow I'll be gone. And then the guy says, listen, you're going tonight. You are not staying in this place. And then at that moment, we hear a howl, Ow! right? We hear this howl. We're like, what the heck is going on, right? So obviously Mr. Elliman shares the same sentiment as us viewers. We're, he's looking around, the guy that looks like Moses he said, listen, you have to leave tonight. He's like, listen, I can't go anywhere. It's it's raining cats and dogs outside. I have no protective gear. I have to stay here. I promise you I won't be any trouble. I'll even give you something, you know, just to be able to stay here tonight. You know what? Maybe you could stay. Let me see if I can prepare something for you. So as he leaves the room, I think Mr. Element leaves, walks around a little bit, and then goes and sees this man locked up inside this prison. The guy is like, please, can you help a kind sir? I've been, I've been put here against my will. These guys are madmen. They're fanatics, I tell you. Let me free. So Mr. Elliman is like, what the heck is going on? Like, what, what, why are you even here? What crime did you commit? I committed nothing. They just saw that I needed to be put away and then they put me inside this, this prison. Then of course, on, on his shoulder, Mr. Elliman's shoulder, is the guy that looks like Moses. He's like, listen, um, this person needs to stay locked up. Listen to my words. Do not pay attention to anything that this guy has to tell you. Come this way. They discuss uh, a lot of things and whatnot. They're going back and forth. And then Mr. Element, of course, he's having a little strike of moral conscience. He questions the, the imprisonment of that guy that we saw in the earlier scene. He says, that guy, the, the guy that looks like Moses, that guy 
is the devil himself. What does that even mean? You know, obviously the devil can't really exist, right? By the way, the guy is like, you know, pleading to be free. If it was the devil with all this power, why would he need help to be free? Why would he need help to escape imprisonment? He said this, the guy that looked like Moses, you see the staffs that we hold, it's imbued with the power of God himself. What we have over the, the prison door, guarding the guy or imprisoning him is that same staff of God. And it was a smaller version. It was like a little, uh, little petite version of the staff. You must not open it by any means. Anything that you're told, do not listen to, to it, you know, in regards to opening that door. We continue, he has his own sleeping quarters and then he goes to sleep, but he can't just, he can't shake off that feeling. And of course, you're consistently hearing the, ooh, the house consistently over and over and over again. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit. What does this guy end up doing? He ends up leaving his room, his sleeping quarters that he was appointed. He goes to the prison, right? And then he's pleading with him, the, the guy again, listen, I promise you, I don't know why they have me locked up. They just, are, they just don't like me. I don't understand, these guys are crazy. The real world rejected them, which is why they're here and they're trying to imprison people like me that, are, that, are, that might go out and tell people of what they're doing here. And he's like, listen, you can easily escape. There's just a small staff at the door, on the doorknob. Why is it that you have an issue? Please, you must let me free. Please have mercy on a poor soul. Fast forward, what does Mr. Element end up doing? He takes up the staff and then lets him free. Mr. Elliman then says, listen, we got to go. And then he's just struck with this, with some energy, some pressure. He's, he's doing some weird contortions, which was crazy. By the way, this Twilight Zone done in the 60s, what was going on was actually unreal. He's going into this contortion and he falls to the ground. The man that was in tatters begging for freedom, which is now freed by Mr. Elliman, he starts going into this metamorphosis into the devil. And then once, as soon as you see that end, the end of his transformation, he disappears. The guy that looked like Moses uses, you know, what a little energy he has to lift up Mr. Element and says, good job. Now you must live the rest of your life knowing that you released the devil upon the world. Fast forward, boom, we have, uh, we're back into the, like with the beginning of the Twilight Zone episode saying, I have the devil locked up here. I put a little staff on top of the door. The camera pans to the girl that he's speaking to, some woman. Now you must not open this door for the devil himself is in there. I spent most of my life chasing him down and now I have contained him. Please, I'll be right back. He leaves the house. What does the girl end up doing? Out of sheer curiosity, opens the door again and the devil's released. Rod Serling ends the episode with a very, very chilling monologue about the nature of man and curiosity and not being able to hearken to advice, right? And then the episode ends. Beautiful, wonderful episode of The Twilight Zone. We're gonna now give my analysis, right? So what we know the devil is, is he doesn't represent anything but the devil, el diablo. What he represents in that, in that castle was the temptress, right? The spirit of the seductress. Please let me out. Please listen, the people that have, that are all following the way of God, that are, are basically inflicting discipline, sexual discipline upon themselves and understands how to contain the devil have trapped me here. They're the evil ones. In reality, life basically passes on what's good as bad and what's bad as good. Licentiousness rules this place. The, the acts of sensation rule this place. The devil rules this place. The idea of manipulating the people that don't know much in order to have personal gain. This is what they do. This is just the, the, the motif. It doesn't matter if they pretend to be Jewish, uh, Catholic or Muslim, it doesn't matter. If you are not following the ways of the true objective good, you are in a, inadvertently supporting the devil. This is what happened. Mr. Elliman is represents the soul that has no religious or spiritual ties in this world or metaphysical ties in this world. But he was tempted by the devil because that's what the devil, the devil is very, very crafty and very, very good at the manipulation of souls. He is a very, very ancient individual that knows all languages, that knows every which way of manipulation. This is what happened to Mr. Elliman. He was, he was fooled by thinking that the devil was a person in distress, when in reality, he was the embodiment of the almighty evil force. 
contrast to God. What that has to do with semen retention is this. When you're on semen retention, obviously when you start, the impetus for most men to start semen retention is due to a lack, a feeling of a lack of energy. We have been having sex a lot. We've been uh, masturbating a lot. We want to go on this and get our power back. We, go, we spend some time being celibate, being on the practice of semen retention, and then that devil, right, that is locked away with that staff, the metaphorical devil that's locked away in that metaphorical prison, with that metaphorical staff in our lives, in our souls, is begging to be released. Please, what you're doing is nonsense. Semen retention is stupid. It's only for the degenerate of this world. You're not going to be accepted by the children of man. You are not going to be successful in this physical realm. You're not gonna have that, ho that home. You're not gonna have that car. You're not gonna have those, remember the, the nice Rolex watch. If you keep me locked up, you must let me out. I am a good person. As we are staying longer on the practice of semen retention, we, the words of the devil, the sweet, sultry, honey-filled words of the devil are tempting, are very, very tempting. We are even feeling inclined to let that devil out. Of course, the representation of the devil being released is the physical release of your seed through masturbation and through release with a woman. That is the representation of the devil in the room. Mr. Elliman, being older and having experience due to being scarred by the devil because he did not heed the lesson the first time he tried to impart the lesson to the woman right the woman that he was with as he went outside to go run some errands to come back in order to seal the devil away for good but of course like the same with david to solomon the first person that committed sin that did not hearken to the words that the wise men told them will pass on the same sin through generational uh, lines, through interaction with people. This is just what happens, this is the reality of things. Mr. Element again is going to feel guilty once he returns at the end of that, you know, after that episode, seeing that this would have never happened if he just listened to the old wise men. What you need to get from this video and what you need to get from the horrible, rebellious choices of the Mr. Element, the main character, is this, you must hearken to advice. You do not need to experience the Maya of this real, of this physical reality. You don't need to experience uh, the pleasures of sex. You do not need to experience the pleasures of drugs. You do not need to experience the pleasures of drinking and smoking in order to have a good time and to understand the individuals of this world. They have done it, let them do it. We judge them not. What you do is you listen to the words before you. There's no way that we have a Bible, right? We have the, the Tripitaka and we have the Bhagavad Gita all saying the same thing in regards to sex and they're all from different parts of the world and they're wrong. That doesn't make any sense. What needs to be done, gentlemen, I know that a lot of you guys have not experienced you know, the, uh, the touch of a woman, right? Or if you did, I know you haven't experienced drugs, you haven't experienced alcohol. You do not need these things to ascend. You need none of that. What you need to do is to issue what the people are telling you about living your life, right? Fitting into this physical reality and just walk the path of semen retention, being celibate. Do not ever open the door if the devil calls. The devil comes in many, many forms. In that, in the Twilight Zone episode, he was a raggedy old man. In this modern world, as it has been in the days of uh, Winston Churchill, these new devils come in the form of the seductress, the Jezebel vibration. They are just there to remove you from your energy and cause discord between individuals that both have the same faiths and have the same ideas of what ascension looks like. This is it. Remember your journey, remember what the devil looks like, and keep it in your head for when the devil changes form, you are aware of what the, the wiles and the tricks that the devil will use. Beautiful Twilight Zone episode, beautiful message that Rod Sterling imparted to us, and it will do us well 60 years post that point because the episode was done in like the 60s. It's 2024 now. It will do us well to heed his warning and understand lessons seriously. Some people do not escape that pit of fornication, especially fornication with the uh, sex workers, especially fornication with the wrong promiscuous individual, the ones that are poisoned 
by the Jezebel vibration. They are real and they exist. It's not anything that has to do with magic. This is real. Steal yourselves, gentlemen. Don't ever let this world get you down. This is full of individuals that masquerade as forms of the devil. The devil is a multi-headed serpent. It's funny, I'm making a reference to Revelation, but this is just the facts. It's a multi-headed serpent that comes from all angles that will, that will say many, many beautiful things to you, but you must resist it. Follow the way and stay radiant. I'll see you guys in the next video.